so how easily can you get out of your toasty car and go hike the mountain on a rainy, maybe a little bit cold day like this, go hike, go put in a few hours of photography on the mountain, and then hike right back into town, go into a restaurant, and not get funny looks? All of these questions come down to wardrobe. And in particular, if you want to be able to travel super light, you want your entire wardrobe to fit in a tiny little bag. Now, I showed you guys my bag last week that I used for traveling with everything. This is a little day pack, a little nylon day pack that holds my clothes while I'm traveling. But once you dump all the clothes out of it, it pulls up into a little ball. Last week we talked about camera gear. Camera gear is expensive. It's expensive to optimize and it's hard to leave some of it behind. Clothes on the other hand, yeah, they're expensive, but ideally you want to have very few articles of clothing. I'm out here, it's only 45 degrees or so, so I've got just two layers on. I've got my base layer here, and then I've got my down jacket, but let's say that I wanna go to Norway. You know, it might be 10 degrees or less. So how am I gonna use the same wardrobe to go to Norway and then perhaps go to New Zealand right now where it's quite a bit warmer because they're having their summer. That comes down to layering and being able to have very few articles of clothing that are versatile. My wardrobe will cover me from anywhere between 10 degrees and 90 degrees Fahrenheit in all climates pretty much, whether it's raining or, uh, okay, it's just raining here in the UK. So you wanna cover as many different temperatures as possible in as few articles of clothing as possible without smelling awful all the time. All right, so if you just travel with one or two cotton shirts and your good old fashioned denim jeans, no one's gonna wanna be around you unless you're doing laundry every other day. Come on, we're traveling, we're landscape photographers. You don't wanna spend every other day doing laundry. If you were to go look through your drawers right now, you'd probably see you've got a bunch of cotton shirts, cotton jeans, cotton underwear, all that good stuff, right? Cotton socks. The surface of cotton is actually a really good breeding ground for bacteria. So that smell that you get after you hike for a day or two, that's not just your sweat and other nasty things. That's actually bacteria breeding on the surface. This is also a problem with a lot of technical fabrics. So by technical fabrics, I mean like your polyesters, your nylons, your blends of those different synthetics, rayon. All of those are high performance, lightweight fabrics that typically dry out faster, they're moisture wicking, and they're generally much more durable. The problem is those are even better breeding grounds for, for bacteria. So that's why if you go to the gym just once and say you wear your polyester top, it's gonna stink today, and then a few hours later, it will stink more. That's not because your sweat is magically recreating itself to make the smell worse, that is actually bacteria breeding on the surface. So polyester and nylon, a lot of these technical fabrics are the perfect breeding grounds for bacteria. So enter merino wool. So this is a merino wool base layer. It's 100% merino wool and uh, not the greatest looking thing in the world. It's a good, nice slim fit though, which you want with all of your base layers. And this looks kind of like a cross between a poly cotton blend and uh, something cozier. This is actually merino wool. Now, you've probably worn wool before and hated it. You know, you started itching, maybe you have allergies to it, got a rash. So regular wool is very coarse and very scratchy. Merino wool is sourced from these particular sheep in New Zealand that have a very fine wool. And in particular, there are different grades of merino wool. So if you go to a shop and you go pick up a uh, merino wool shirt, uh, you might have extra fine, ultra fine, a lot of confusing terminology. Basically, to get the benefits of merino wool and not have it be scratchy, you want to look for the finer blends of merino wool, which also is more expensive. And unfortunately, a lot of brands make it difficult to figure out what fineness the individual threads are. So for all my base layers, I tend to get Icebreaker. Icebreaker is very reputable. Pretty much anything that's gonna be up against your body needs to be merino wool. Now, you don't want merino wool to be in any of your outerwear because merino wool is not that durable. It's about the same durability of cotton, which is not so great. It's not nearly as durable as a polyester or some of these technical fabrics. So merino wool is going to sit close to your body. That's going to be your base layer, like a t-shirt. That's going to be socks. So I have 100% merino wool socks, which are amazing. That can even be accessories like this scarf. This is a 100% merino wool scarf that I got in Ireland. 
love it and it actually keeps me warm and it doesn't smell despite wearing it on hikes for over a year. The shirts I am currently wearing have not been washed in two months. Let's see how we're doing. Just smells like my deodorant. That's why merino wool is amazing. Talk to any hiker, mountaineer, through hiker, they will tell you about the magic of merino wool and being able to go to a hostel at the end of the day and not be turned at the door because they smell so awful. Merino wool is naturally antimicrobial. If you were to look at the surface of merino wool under a microscope, you would find that the surface is so irregular that bacteria can't breed on it and so it just dies out. So merino wool is naturally antimicrobial and it doesn't wear off. It's not like some sort of antimicrobial treatment that can wear out after multiple washes. The very surface of the fabric itself is too irregular for bacteria and so it just dies out. But it's so fine and so soft that even if you are allergic to wool, it feels nothing like that. Now, to be honest, normally when I get a new merino wool base layer, it takes about a week to wear in the fibers a little bit. and so. I often get a little bit of a rash on my upper chest when I start wearing a shirt for the first time. And then after about a week, it seems like the fibers soften out a little bit and then I no longer have issues with it. So even the really good quality merino wool, you might have a little bit of a break-in period. I probably do a sink wash of just one or two articles of clothing every week or so. Sometimes I'll go up to a month without washing one of my particular articles of clothing. Yeah stuff you don't really want to advertise to the world but that's the point of good clothing so in total thanks to layering I have three base layers now base layers are the articles of clothing that sit directly next to your body and in particular these are my top base layers so I have one long sleeve this is a heavyweight merino wool it's a 200 gram per square meter I think uh, which is a mid to heavy weight. If you're looking for a really heavy weight, you can get as much as 250 or 300, depending on the brand. Uh, with Icebreaker, I think they do it in increments of 150, 200, and 260. So this is a 200 weight. And because it's slim fitted, so when you put it on, it conforms nicely, it's not baggy, that means it's very easy to layer these to add additional warmth. So right now, I'm gonna take off the scarf here. I'm wearing my lightweight merino wool base layer. This is what I wear in 70 or 80 degrees, or I just wear it, as you can see, under this jacket in 45 degree weather, where I don't want to get too toasty underneath. And so this is a different style. I like v-necks, and so I like that if I'm on a business trip or if I'm going to travel somewhere, I can layer this under a dress shirt, and you would never know that, oh, it's merino wool, this is hiking gear. Down to about freezing, I wear just this, under my jacket. Below that, sometimes I will layer these too. I have one last base layer that sits between those two. This is a heavyweight tee and it's also a crew neck, so that way if I don't want to wear a scarf or something like that, it's just a little nippy outside, got something to keep this warm. So this is a 200 weight. It's heavier than this one and again, I can layer it. Unlike maybe those big wool sweaters you're used to seeing, this fabric is very thin, which means that you can wear all three layers and not have any bulk. In fact, no one would even know that you're wearing like four or five layers on the outside because it'll still look quite slim. That's really cool. So in addition to not smelling forever, it is also one of the most miraculous insulators out there. Kind of like styrofoam. If you fill a styrofoam cooler with something icy cold, it keeps it cold. If you put something hot in it, it keeps it hot. That's what an insulator does. Well, merino wool is an insulator. And in fact, it's one of the best insulators out there for clothing. So what that means is if you're out hiking in Texas and it's like 90 degrees Fahrenheit, it will keep you cool. And in addition, it's also moisture wicking. So it'll absorb the sweat from your body and allow it to evaporate into the air. So that'll help keep you cool. But in cool weather, if it gets wet, it doesn't lose its ability to keep you warm. That's one of the downsides of cotton and certain synthetic fabrics is when they get wet, they lose their ability to insulate and hold on to that heat. Merino wool, on the other hand, hey, merino wool sheep, they get wet all the time, right? In those highlands, they gotta stay warm. So you wear a merino wool base layer, it keeps you warm even if it gets wet. So if you're hiking and you start sweating, you're not gonna freeze to death because suddenly all that wet fabric starts wicking away all of your heat, it's gonna hold on to it. Really, I could travel with just two base layers, but for versatility, I travel with three base layers, and they're so small and so thin together, they take up next to no room. 
So I travel with three base layers, basically three shirts for traveling any amount of time. Now merino wool can be machine washed, but I typically do sink washes. It's really easy to do because these don't smell. You just give them a quick wash, maybe use a little hand soap, Dr. Bronner's and just soak it in warm water. Really, the only reason I have to wash my shirts is because my deodorant leaves stains on it. You can wear these for a month, sometimes two months at a time, and you won't notice the smell. And if, in fact, if you do notice the smell after a hike and you let it sit out for a day or two, you'll come back to it and it doesn't smell anymore because it's naturally antimicrobial. So really, I just do it just because mentally you, you feel like you should wash it and because it's got those deodorant marks. So my three shirts for those base layers layered in any configuration. Let me go from 10 degrees Fahrenheit to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's your base layer. Now there's another base layer that you need. This is going to sit right up next to your skin. So these are merino wool leggings. They're just meant to go pretty much under anything, uh, preferably pants, probably not under your shorts. This is also made of merino wool. These are also icebreaker, a lot of different brands out there. I've had good success with Helly Hansen stuff. They just don't typically go on sale quite as frequently, so uh, it's harder to find in summer clearance. But this will easily fit under any pair of pants. So I'm wearing these slim fitted pants. I can still fit these under here. And when I go out hiking in sub freezing temperatures and it's freezing, I can just throw these underneath. All right, so we've got our base layers covered. So pretty much anyone will tell you when you're looking for lightweight jackets that pack the most insulation per ounce, they're gonna tell you to do a down jacket. I myself am not an expert in it. I know roughly that when you're looking for a good down jacket, you're looking for something that has a higher fill ratio or fill power. And that doesn't mean that it has more down feathers. That actually yeah. just means that the quality of the down feathers is better and that it traps more air to insulate you. Now, naturally, down jackets are very expensive because they have these incredible properties and they bundle up so tight. Now, normally you would think of this as being your outer layer, but this is actually a mid layer. So if it starts raining, which hits the Lake District, I do see clouds, so quite likely this is not going to keep the water out. It's probably got a DWR treatment on it and that's it. That's not going to keep the water out for more than a minute or two. So this is a mid layer. It's not meant to be exposed to the elements. It's not good at keeping out the wind. So we now get from the mid layer to the outer layer. This is what does the magic of keeping the rain and wind out. In the ultralight community, at least, the helium outdoor or the helium jacket by Outdoor Research is famous because it's pretty much the lightest jacket you can find out there. Now, the only problem with that particular jacket is that it didn't have any pit zips or pockets. I don't care so much about the pit zips, but I do need the pockets for when it starts raining. I need somewhere to stuff some things. So they created a hybrid version, which adds just a tiny bit more weight, basically to add pockets and zippers. And it is quite baggy. A lot of the rain jackets typically are because they're meant to go over everything else that you're wearing to keep the water out. So this is my outer layer. I pull it out very infrequently. So for a long time, I didn't even worry about optimizing my rain jacket, except that it took a lot of weight and space. And so I wanted to make sure that I always had it with me because especially in the UK, you never can tell when it's going to start pouring. It rolls up into a tiny little ball, much smaller than this, which means I can always have it with me. And that's the idea with these layers. You should never have to question, should I bring this layer with me or not on this particular part of the trip? Because it's all going to be so small, it's trivial to squeeze it back into the bag and be prepared for any sort of climate. And that's ultimately what you need to be able to travel between any destinations for a year of travel without repacking. So we've got base layer, mid layer, outer layer. Now let's uh, transition from upper body lower body. So the last thing you want to do is travel with a pair of denim jeans. They're just the worst fabric you could possibly pick. They're incredibly bulky, heavy, and a pain to wash. You really can't fit a pair of jeans into the sink and get it washed very easily, especially the size of some of the sinks here in the UK. So you're looking for pants that are some sort of soft shell. A soft shell is a special kind of material that's relatively durable on the outside and water just rolls off of it. That helps keep it clean. Unfortunately, soft shells are very expensive and they're not quite as durable as say a Cordura or some sort of polyester fabric. There's a lot of really cool pants out there that try to get the best of both worlds. 
So these in particular are outliers dungarees. Uh, they're slim dungarees. They're very slim fitted, which was a little bit problematic for the first few days, but once I worked them in. These are really cool because the exterior is uh, Cordura, I think, and it's insanely durable. So I've been on hikes with this. I've been to fancier places with them. They look like a nice pair of slacks, but they're not shiny. They feel a whole lot better than cotton or denim. And they also have a little bit of water resistance. If you accidentally dump some coffee on your leg or it starts to rain, the water will beat off and roll off for a little bit. Unfortunately, maybe after four or five minutes of being in the rain, it's gonna soak through. But then once you make it indoors, they dry out in about 10 or 15 minutes just with a little bit of AC. So the thinner the pant and the better the technical fabric, the faster it's going to dry out, which means it's going to be really convenient to wear between hikes and in town. And it's gonna be convenient to wash because it will easily dry overnight. So I highly recommend the Outlier Slim Dungarees. I've been basically wearing these nonstop for two months now. Uh, I just washed them for the first time a couple weeks ago, so that's also nice because the fabric is so thin and doesn't really hold on to a lot of sweat or anything, it doesn't tend to stink, but I did finally give them a wash. The bottoms were looking a little muddy. These are great for cooler climates. In warmer climates, I found that they can be a little bit stuffy, and so my recommendation is if you're planning to do a lot of warmer climates and you're planning to do some business trips, Bluff Works has an amazing pant called the Tailored Chinos. I got these, tried them out. Uh, in Virginia when it was a little bit warmer. I loved them. They looked fantastic. Probably some of the best fitting pants I've worn in my life. Uh, but the cut on the leg was a little bit shorter, so that meant that it didn't really keep out the cold and the wind when it cooled down a little bit, and the wind tended to go right through the fabric. So that meant that when I was hiking, it felt great because they breathed so well. But on a colder day, I didn't do quite a great job. So if you're wanting to do a lot of warmer climates, pretty much 50 degrees above, I would do the Bluff Works, the Taylor Chinos. They look great. Otherwise, I would do Outlier Slim Dungarees and just be prepared that in some warmer climates, it might feel a little bit stuffy, and so just have a pair of shorts with you. So that covers pants. I travel with only one pair of pants, which means that I don't have to pack it. I just wear it all the time. I wear it on the plane. And that's a recurring theme with ultralight packing is to try to get to the point where the things that you travel with are so good that you're already, you're already wearing them, you already have them with you on the plane, and you don't need any extras. Now, while we're at it, let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about these. This is my underwear. It's by Ex Officio, which is really well known in the ultralight packing community. And um, I'll be honest, I have mixed feelings about this. So first off, it's not cotton. Whatever you do, there should be zero cotton in your pack. Cotton is one of the worst materials to try to wash. If you do try to sink wash it and you don't have a dryer, you sit it out, it will turn to concrete. True story. This is 100% polyester. And that means you're gonna be doing lots of quick washes and need it to dry out very quickly. So I travel with just three. Basically, I swap between two of them and then I always have a backup. Really, you could travel with just two. And I think the only time I've ever needed to use the third pair was when I was feeling lazy and I didn't do the sink wash the night before. So every time I shower, first thing I do is give, give these a quick wash. It takes maybe a minute to do and I'm all ready for the next day. I just let them air dry and they'll be dry within a couple of hours or so because it's polyester. Polyester dries out really quickly. And last thing, now that it started raining, I gotta wrap this up quickly, socks. Socks may not seem like a big deal to you, but if you take off your shoes at the end of the day after a long hike, the first thing you're going to notice is, and the first thing everyone else is going to notice in the room is that awful smell of the socks. So like everything else, I do merino wool socks. This is probably the best investment in travel clothing I've made in my life. These are by Darn Tough, Super Darn Tough, something like that. These are uh, mostly merino wool, and then I think they have some sort of technical fabric in them because as the name suggests, they're stupid tough. I only have two pairs of these socks. I've basically worn these nonstop for three years now. No signs of a hole yet. So if you're used to getting holes in your socks all the time, and you're tired of cold feet when you hike, you're tired of smelly feet, this is the best investment you can possibly make in your travel wardrobe. I think I paid like $16 
for a pair of these. Yeah, that's an expensive pair of socks, but you only own two pairs of these. They also have a shorter cut of this that I occasionally wear in warmer weather, but I actually love these. For whatever reason, these actually keep my feet cooler when it's warm outside. So if I'm hiking and it's 70 or 80 degrees out, these actually do a better job of keeping my feet cool than any other sock that I've worn. Easily best bang for buck investment I've ever made in my travel wardrobe. It's because between socks and underwear, that takes up a lot of room. So all told, three base layers. So those three shirts, although you could really get away with two quite easily. Your mid layer, that's the one down jacket. You'll wear this on the plane. The rain jacket, which I should be wearing right now that it started raining, and that's super small. One pair of pants that you're gonna wear all the time. Merino leggings that you can throw under it when it gets a little chilly. Two pairs of socks, one of which you'll be wearing. Three pairs of underwear, you could get that down to two, one of which you will also be wearing. And then the one pair of hiking shoes. In particular, go for some sort of waterproof hiking shoe. This is uh, Merrill's Moab, I think, and it's got Vortex, which is great because you go hiking in the fells, you never know if you step over there, you just might be submerged in several inches of water. I just started traveling with a beanie. It's nothing special, nothing like Thomas Heaton's very special beanie. Uh, so I'm actually shopping around here in the area looking for some cool merino wool based beanies because it is technically a, a base layer. Everything else is basically just a fashion accessory. That's all you need. Oh, hey, there we go. We get to see some of the beading effect that these pants have. So if you're looking for a way to cut down on the amounts that you travel with, start with your wardrobe. You might also want to hop to last week's vlog talking about ways that you can optimize your camera gear, but this is the best bang for buck investment I've ever made in my travel. It completely revolutionized my packing to the point that I can now travel with one backpack and it has everything. And all my clothes basically fit into a little ball about this big. So Merry Christmas. Maybe this gives you some great gift ideas for your hiker and photography friends. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for the latest on-location vlogs, digital nomad tips, and landscape photography tutorials.